Hey everybody, thanks for watching. We'll get to the vlog in a second, but first let's give away the free Be Better Golf shirt. In the last vlog, like every vlog that I'm putting out now, I give away a free Be Better Golf shirt to a subscriber who puts something in the comment box below. And I'll do the same at the end of this vlog too. So the winner was Mike Sweeney. Mike Sweeney left a constructive comment and wrote the word shirt and in the comment box. This week it'll be something different at the very end. Congratulations, Mike. If you want to win a shirt, all you have to do is subscribe, click the post notifications button, and listen for the secret phrase at the end of this vlog. And here is this week's match. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is a match that's already in progress. I was so late, I was a little late to the first tee. So this is the second hole. This is a match of myself. A money match versus a guy named Mark, a friend of mine that lives down in uh, northern San Diego that was up in Long Beach to play golf. All right, so this is the second hole, and that's my drive. Fairly solid, just up the right-hand side, and there's a bunker there, which is why I'm kind of watching it. You can see it landed and rolled out to there. Some, luckily, some thick grass in front of that bunker, so I have kind of a bird's nest lie in front of the bunker. Here's Mark. This is Mark is a works in a pro shop of a very famous golf course in northern San Diego and is a huge fitness enthusiast and a very good golfer. He hit a really big ball here. High draw, penetrating, and he only had I think about 50 yards to the to the pin or something from there. This I have 100 yards to go. Um, actually maybe just a little under 100 yards and if you can see that tree that's cut off by the top of the frame there I have to go over that tree impact was just okay the rough uh, kind of I let it get in between my face and the ball it shut down the face a little bit and then I pulled that left and it didn't spin so it rolled out Mark's shot was good and uh, actually he hit that a little it, Mark's shot was not good actually just remember he hit that a little bit to the right and it rolled out so he was on the fringe. This is my putt for birdie. The match is all square at this point. We both bogeyed the first hole that you guys didn't get to see. And that was a lot faster and firmer than I thought it would be. I really felt like I barely touched that. And uh, not only did it not break but it also ran on quite a ways. So here's Mark putting for his birdie. Actually, I just remember what hole we were on. He did. He had a fairly decent pitch shot. Same thing though. It was a lot firmer than we all expected around this green. So this is my putt for par. It's. I'll tell you this. It's longer than it looks. That was. Uh, that was the stroke, I think. And after that, th I hate three putting with a passion. So after that three putt, I really buckle down and uh, get things sorted out with the putting. So I lose that hole. I'm one down in the match at this point. Going on to the third hole, it's a par three, about 162 yards. I have, I think I have an eight iron. Yeah, I have an eight iron. It was, uh, the wind was slightly helping. That one, I kind of stopped my swing halfway down, and uh, when you do that, the club keeps going. Hit it left, but it made it over the bunker. I'm pin high left on the green putting, but it's going to be about 33 feet or so. Here's Mark for his shot. Mark's a long hitter. Uh, he did hook this one quite a bit, though. Started at the left edge of the green, but hooked and went far, though. He thought it was going to be in the bunker. It's actually not in the bunker, so he's he's chipping here. So that was his effort for birdie, and he'll have that left for par. So there I am, getting set up, and really trying to lock in on... This is a little bit downhill as well, and I'm really trying to lock in on how hard to hit this one. I actually felt like I hit that a little bit too hard. 
speed was totally perfect. Looked like it had a chance to go in. It didn't, but I secure the par anyway. And Mark is sitting about six feet away to tie the hole. Ooh, so Mark misses, and the match goes back to all square. And we go to the par five, fourth hole. This is a dog leg right. You see that bunker that's down there? A little bit center right of the green. You want to carry the ball over that or a little bit right of that bunker. And to the left is uh, rough and then out of bounds. I hit that fairly hard, but it it hooked a little bit, quite a bit. It pulled a lot and hooked a little. So I was nervous about being completely out of bounds there. But uh, I thought I would be okay. Mark killed this ball. That's huge. He hit the exact line that you're supposed to. Pro Tracer didn't work on that one, but uh, I thought that it, I tried to put some effort into this vlog to because you guys noticed that it mentioned that when I shoot it on the iPhone, I'm, I, I hopefully when I get the new iPhone, you'll be able to see it better. But when I shoot on the iPhone, it's much harder to, to track the ball. When I shoot with my big camera, uh, you can track the ball e more easily. So this is. Uh, my ball had stayed in, so then I had hybrid from about 218. And I'm saying four right because the guys were had just been, they had walked off the green and then they had, were walking back on the group in front of us, and it was near their carts, which is near the cart path. So, but I'm about pin high. Her mark has iron in his hand for his second shot on this par five. He has a really aggressive move through the ball, very kind of baseball esque. You know, really can go after it. Stay right there. Right on it. It's a perfect looking shot. Landed right next to the hole in this par five and he'll have an eagle putt. Eagle putt, nice. That's right. Okay, so here is my pitch. That's where it ended up. And it's a little bit on the upslope. I have to cover the bunker. And then not only, I'm, and I'm thinking, I not only want to cover the bunker, but I want to cover the downslope off the bunker. Because a lot of times I'll land it just over the bunker and it'll kick forever. So I actually landed this about pin high, and it rolled out to about 18 feet or so for my birdie putt. Now here's Mark for his eagle putt. The match is all square at the moment. And Mark's usually a pretty good putter, very good all-around player. He's about a scratch handicap. So that gives Mark the regular birdie, not the big birdie. So a uh, birdie from Mark, birdie four. You can see just behind me, that's the, uh, that's the fence and the disc golf course that they have. And I used to see a lot of people always playing disc golf, and it's, it's pretty rare that I see people doing that now. All right, so this is for my birdie to tie the hole and to keep the match all square. Great putt. My full, full routine. I really got, after I made that three putt, I really committed myself to not shortchanging the process at all. I was gonna 100% the process every single time. That trust routine that I talked about in on Instagram. So that makes it worth following me on Instagram. BB underscore golf show on Instagram. Follow me and you'll see that trust routine. So Mark hit an awesome drive right down the middle, like exactly down the middle, and very long too. Uh, I forget what we're talking about here, contacts or something like that. All right, so this hole is about 400 yards. It is very straight. Bunkers, uh, a, a bunker that's only penal for very short hitters on the left-hand side, and uh, a bunker on the right-hand side that's definitely in play. So you want to hit kind of like a slight pull straight. But that I just, it was just a very, very shut face, a little out of sequence there. And I hit it left into the left rough of the next hole. So I have some trees to hit it up over, but it's a blue pin, which is all the way back. So I should be able to get up and over everything, be able to land it and have it roll out. But I kind of left everything behind. I think I, the last second, I was thinking to give it a lot of loft to get it over the trees, and I left the face open to do that. 
Mark hitting from about 80 yards to a blue pin in the back. Hits uh hits it about pin high, but not that great. So if you guys have or if you guys are on cell phones, it might be hard to see. But if you're on the regular computer screen, you'll see or you can actually pinch and zoom in on that if you're on the cell phone. That lie is terrible. It just totally landed and kind of stayed. So the ball is mostly under the sand. And you, it's, notice how I was addressing that in the heel. So it's this Azinger shot that Tony Lutek taught me where you uh, address it in the heel and you smash the hosel into the stand, sand right behind the ball. And then the sand forces everything to go left and the, and the ball gets up yeah, with a little bit of height. Really I didn't hit it perfectly, but it was, it was all right. So that was Mark for birdie. So he's got that left for his par. And this is Macy doing my full routine. And I bet you if you go through these putts where I do my full routine, you'll notice that the time it takes between when I step to the ball and when I actually strike the ball is super similar. I was really locked in on that putt, really knew what I wanted to do. And not only that was a par, so that was that was really great. Mark made his comebacker there. And the match remains all square. Going on to the this is the second hardest hole on the front, the sixth hole. Slight dog leg right. There's a big tree in the middle of this fairway. That's why I'm kind of watching that. I didn't quite catch that as well as I wanted to. So it, it the tree, it was right in the center of the fairway, So, but not long enough where the tree was bothering me. Mark hit this, and it started to hook, which is why I gave it the Ghetto Pro Tracer, but it actually bounced back a little bit, and he was fine. So he's just into the left rough there at about 105 yards out. And that's the one that I remembered on the second hole. That went long right. The uh, the rough kind of gave him a flyer. So see that tree that is on the right-hand side of our screen there? That spreads out more than you can see above the frame and is something to think about. So I do have to put a little bit extra loft on this. This is 90 yards. This is my 54-degree wedge. And I just really am working on, like, risk conditions in transition when I'm hitting my wedge shots now. Not doing that wobble and not letting it fold around and everything. I'm really just trying to feel just flexion and extension with the wrist. A very, very simple, solid wrist. Actually, I've been prescribed to do a bunch more wrist exercises to get my hands and wrists stronger. That was Mark for birdie, who runs it about nine feet past the hole misjudging how hard he would need to hit it from the fringe. Match is all square at the moment. Here's Mark. Did not get it inside my my birdie putt, so this is for a par. Probably pretty crucial for him to make that. So it blocks it out to the right, so that's a unforced error for Mark there and makes a bogey. So here's my full routine. It's always exactly the same, no matter the length. I'm behind it. And I'm also saying words. And if you listen very closely, you'll hear like a long S sound, almost like air is coming out of a tire. That's me. Because I'm kind of hissing at the ball. So here is, uh, so I, I win that hole. I go one up in the match. Here is the par five, seventh hole. Tee shot's not that difficult, but there is a bunker to the right. Uh, the second shot is really the, the difficult thing on this hole. Really balanced, pretty good swing, but faded just a little bit off the line I wanted. And actually one hopped into the bunker I was looking at, which is why I was kind of checking that ball out in the air. And here's Mark. Nightly fight. Mark's one down right at this moment, trying to uh, keep you guys updated as much as possible. Hit yeah. a big ball right down the middle and then drew into the left rough. And there's yep. a tree on the left rough, yeah. but he hit it so hard that it landed in the left rough and kicked forward. So he's in an all right spot. All right, so 
This was a mental mistake here because this is a hybrid that I'm going to try to hit out of this bunker, which I've done before. But the difference is the lie was not good, and I thought I was going to try to hit a punch, like a punch shot with the hybrid out, just to get it trundling down there because there is water short right of the green. But punch, punch shots in general I'm not very good at, and uh, that's a specialty shot that I've just never practiced. So, But it was all right. It advanced it down the, down the hole quite a ways and got me inside 100 yards. Just put a little bit too much loft on this one, and yeah, it was a little fat. Club, and I, hit a, I was slowed down on it and hit a little fat. Yeah, I was thinking, this is too much club, decelled, and in that decel, it kind of increases the radius of, from your uh, swing, and that's what put it into the ground a little bit. Really locked in on my routine, so it was T behind the ball, R, U, and then uh, actually that wasn't my full routine. Now, now you'll notice there, that's my full routine has started, and it'll take the same amount of time as the other ones, just through this basically a uh, trust protocol that I'm going through. T R U S T. You guys will see that on Instagram. And I made a video about it. All right, so here is me putting, really trying to be locked in. Think about how hard to hit it through the fringe and everything else. Just a little bit short. So. That's a tap in for par that was conceded. And Mark had had some trouble on that hole. So I go two up in the match with two to play. This is the hardest hole, debatably the hardest hole in the course. It is, I think, the number one handicap on the course. And uh, it's like 450 or something, dog leg left, uh, water short left, and also a bunker off the tee and very tree line, so uh, usually a pretty tough hole. Mark hit a solid drive that drew a little bit into the left side of it. I hit, uh, the, sh the shape of that actually isn't right, that pro, tra that pro tracer there. The app that I'm using is called Shot Tracer, if you guys are interested. And if you, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, actually, and send me a message, I'll, I'll uh, send you like a, a code to be able to do the app without the watermark. Or I'll ask him if I'm allowed to do that. I'm not sure if I am. All right, so Mark hit a good shot just short of the green. I was trying a shot that has worked well for me on par threes, but not there. All right, you need one more good putt. I tried to play that par three cut shot that I've been developing and overdid it. So kind of in a future mentality, I said, okay, I need to hit one more good putt rather than in a pass mentality where I was like, oh, what was that? That was awful. So I'm in this kind of uh, grass bunker, they call it here. Mark hit it to about 12 feet there for his par. Remember, I'm two up in the match at this point because I won the last two. So here I'm really thinking about matching the flat spot in my swing with the slope. So it's kind of swinging up. And I did, that was great. That was really good, just because I didn't put any extra energy into it than the shot needed. So that ball sitting down there that I'm marking, that's me for par. Here's Mark for his par, and that's a good stroke. Nice, Mark. So he made that, and I really wanted him to make it because I wanted that. I wanted the pressure situation because I had been putting very well, and I wanted the pressure situation of having to make a three footer so and actually i historically play very badly on the 205 yard par three ninth hole so i did not want the match to go to the ninth hole i wanted to have to make this putt so the routine's the same really happy with that all right so that's it i i win that match against it. thank you to mark for playing and for uh, being on the channel I went on to play about five more holes before I had to go pick up my kids, and the putting was unbelievable. Uh, the very next hole, I made a 18-footer for par. Then the hole after that, I made a four-footer for birdie. Then I two-putted the hole after that, and the hole after that. And then on the 13th hole, I made about a 25-footer from the fringe for another birdie, all using the same routine. So hopefully the streak continues. I've been using the uh, putting green in the backyard a little bit, but uh, just super happy with my putting because the, actually the ball striking 
wasn't that great in this round, uh, certainly to start after I had just run out of the car. But then um, the, you know, the putting was so good that it actually leaked into my long game, which is, uh, it just felt like it didn't matter what would happen because I would make whatever. Make everything, it's, that's the theme, right? All right, thanks for watching everybody. Hey, I'm going to be giving away another free t-shirt because this is a vlog and on Be Better Golf, I'm gonna be giving away free t-shirts every single vlog I put out. So you gotta be subscribed. You gotta click post notifications, that's a little bell. And you have to leave a comment below with a special phrase. Uh, the phrase today is shark attack. You just put the words shark attack down there and I'll know that you uh, want to be in the running to get the next free Be Better Golf vlog shirt. And congratulations to the winner from last time. So, And you'll have to tune in next time to see if you won. Thanks a lot, everybody. So be sure to click subscribe, post notifications, leave that comment. See you later. Bye.